some respects, yeah. What, what do we mean by variance? It's a measure of what? Kind of, yeah, a distance, kind of spread, right, of variation. Because that root was in variance. Um, so the idea is that we're doing is we're taking data values and we're computing this quantity called the variant to really see how far apart our information is spread. All right. So uh, that's really the point. Now, at what point do I divide by n or n minus 1? What makes the difference on the variance why I would divide by n or n minus 1? Speak up. Population. Population. Which one do I divide by? Um, population divided by n. Absolutely. And it's lower than 20 divided by n minus Well done. Thank you. Um, so, say that one more time so everybody can hear it. The population divided by n for anything is a population that's lower than 20 divided by n minus 1. Right. And for all samples, you always divide by n minus 1. Okay, so that's the difference there. And all that we do at the Taylor is we take the square root to figure out the standard deviation. And the standard deviation makes much more sense, right? Because remember our example, we don't talk about, well, the variance was 125 points squared. Now, I'd rather know about you know, the standard deviation being 10.5 points. So, um, we all did this. You guys left working on examples the other day in class. And that was awesome. Now, here is the problem with computing the standard deviation of variance to what we did it before. We talked about it. There's a rounding rule in play, right? So I have to round on the standard on the variance and the standard deviation. Why? Why did we round? Let's go back and look at it. Guys, I'm having a really great day. So help me out here. So here's the formula. So here's the formula. Um, here's the one for um, a population. Here's the one for a sample. Well, why do I have to round? Well, I do the standard deviation or the variance computation. What do I have to do on the mean? All right, somebody say it. Got to round, right? So that means I've basically set the number of significant digits to which I'm rounding, so I've got to do it again for the standard deviation and the variance. But when I rounded, what did I introduce? When I round it, am I actually representing the real number anymore? Mm -hmm. No. Which means I introduced round off error. Right? Yes. Which means, is error bad? <laughs> error is always bad. Right? <laughs> when, when you go to church, error is bad. When you come to stats, error is bad. Nothing out of the way. Anyway, so. Uh, when I go through, I want to have a different computation so I don't have this stupid round off error. Now, it doesn't take a lot of work to go back through and to figure out how you how you get here. Um, if I were to go if I were to go back and look at the computation for standard deviation and flat out just insert um, instead of the sample mean with the round off, insert the actual arithmetic operation. This is what would happen, okay? Where I had the sum of x minus x bar squared. If I sum, if I place in the sum from i equals one to n, and I expand it out like we all learned in college algebra, to expand quadratic functions. Mm -hmm. you remember doing that one? I'm getting a few head nods. Mm -hmm. Then we get this. I promise. So this is we'll call this the shortcut way. Um, because it actually takes a little less work in some respects. But this is way more accurate. 
way more accurate. There's no round off error. You get an exact number. In fact, it's so much more accurate. This is what Microsoft Excel uses. Every piece of commercial software that computes the standard deviation does this. They may still compute the mean, but they compute that. Okay? You think you might need to remember this? Yes. Oh, yeah. We don't show lots of equations, but when we do, they're awesome. All right. So let me give you a second there. So let me just freeze it. So are they still uh, playing playing the drums outside when you walked in? Very kind of them. <laughs> I want to see somebody who's a music major walk out there with a metronome. <laughs> That's what I wanted. I'm all for people showing me their cultural relevance, but it's pretty clear to me I could not survive in that culture because they played out of tempo with each other. It was really distracting. Okay, so. Here's what I want you to do in groups. I want you to use the shortcut formula, which you've just written down, to compute this. Now, here's the way to do it. Here's the real smart way to do it. You want to find the sum of the values, right, because there's a sum in there. You want to square each value and find the sum, so you want to find the sum of the squares. And then you just want to go back and substitute those generically, OK? So, um, Scotty, how about you move over here with Nicole, uh, and uh, Jordan, you uh, find somebody who will work with you. We clearly have two groups to choose from. But, uh, you can make them choose. So if you have the numbers back, I can go back and put the formula up if you prefer. We're doing okay? Did you write the formula down?
Scotty, why don't you just hang out there? column table where one is the numbers the other is the square of the numbers and then sum the two and three and take them back in. All right, how many of you have a number? Some of you do. Not all. That's okay. So what, what do you have for your standard deviation? Or for your variance, rather? standard deviation. It should be pretty easy. 10.7. And it has to be that way because, first off, that's pretty close to the square root. The bigger issue is all these are integers, right? So when you're talking about rounding, you follow the same rounding rule as the mean in this case. Okay, it's not really pretty, but it's okay. If I hadn't rounded, what would, 10, what would the square root of 115 be? 10.7338025. Okay, it's 10.728. 
da da da. And after a little while, that information just isn't super useful, is it now? All right, for usefulness, um, this is probably about as nice as you get. Um, all right, so let's talk about just a few things momentarily. saving and writing this. You know, perhaps the more interesting piece is that we can do all this stuff with a spreadsheet. Um, we can compute means and standard deviations easily on spreadsheets and have useful information. So let's, uh, as soon as this gets copied over there, I'm going to throw up a spreadsheet here. Okay, so let's just go through and do some of this. I don't know if you can see this. Just take a break for a second and follow along. Um, while each of you were being very diligent, I was as well, and I typed all those informations in, and I, I gave the square root, and I squared the individual uh, values, took their sums just to kind of get ahead of the game. Now, let's go back through and do a few things also. I'm also going to compute the mean, which there's a wonderful formula built in. What do you think the formula in Excel would be for the mean? Equals, you know, you'd think so, but it's average. It's like, come on, guys. We go through all this difficulty to do this. So here's the average. Compute the average. It's about 82. Okay. It should be 82, right? So let's compute the standard deviation the old way. Is everybody okay to watch me do this? All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to take, I'm, I'm gonna, I've got my data up here. I'm going to take the mean minus each of these. All right, so this is going to be the, um, the data minus the mean. So this looks like this minus, and my mean is 82. So for all of you who've had Core 1140 and done wonderfully, how many of you had Core 1140? Scotty has. Cody has. Yeah, that's right. What's that? No, that's uh, computer apps. So I'm going to just compute their difference. Okay, that's their difference. I'm going to square that. So this is this value, crap. This is this value squared. Okay. I'm going to sum it up. And then I'm going to compute the variance, which is equal to this value divided by n or n minus 1? n minus 1, which in this case it, yeah, is, is 8, but I'm going to type that, minus 1, just so you can see it happen. So that's the variance. That's the same one we got, right? And I have to round because I did, if I do it this way, I have to round, right? When I take the standard deviation, I'd better round it off. Now, um, this data is actually relatively compact, so you don't see much of a difference. Well, let's do it. What I hope that you see is that the computer actually has a variance command. Excel does. It's just var. Var of this data, wrap it up and hit enter, still gets the same thing. Okay? Um, it'll still do the same work, even though this is... Uh, not superbly pretty. Let's go and do another example in just a second that, that really kind of highlights the difference between the two, two methods, okay? Let's do some of that. Um, but let's do it by looking in the book. And I want to find a data set that's got some nasty numbers. Uh, 
let's see here. Where's the data set that I was looking at? Love it when a plan falls apart. You guys ever seen Happy Gilmore? You know the uh, the part where she she hits the puck in the net, and he's like, "Worst backfire of all time." <laughs> um, that was not quite what just happened then. So let's take a look at um, let's take a look at number nine on page one thirty eight. If you've got it in your text, and we are going to crack open our fun time um, image made for presentation. Here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we just did, only we're going to use Microsoft Excel. We're going to use, we're going to generate the mean, then compute the standard deviation, and then we're going to do the shortcut formula and do the same thing. So here is this value set. Which set is more variable? All right, so we're going to crawl over here to Microsoft Excel. We're going to create a new one because I really want to drive to you the fact that a spreadsheet is a really, really useful tool. All right, so let's, let's throw some of these numbers down here. So 4.8, 2.6, and 1 1.5. 1.8, 1.8, 3.3. Nope. Five point one, one point one, one point eight, and then finally two point five. Okay, so we're going to compute this the whole way through. All right, um, I'm going to insert an extra row here. Here are my numbers with their squared values. All right, so I'm going to square these out just kind of to to get it done. So I've got the squares. So let's compute the mean over here. We're going to use the average function. So this is my mean. And it should round to how many places? Two. Better go to two. Way to go, Microsoft Excel. All right, so now let's go and do this the old way, and then we'll do the shortcut way. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a row, I'm going to create another column that looks like the numbers less the mean, and I'm going to lock the mean into place. Does everybody know how to lock numbers into place with Excel with the double dollar signs? I'll post, it, I'll post this up there in a little bit. So that is 10 numbers. Okay, that's right. So that's their difference. This is the square of the difference. So when I do the old way, this is the um, x minus um, x bar. This is x minus x bar squared that I'm going to do here. And 
And now I'm going to take the sum. Right, and now I'm going to divide the sum to find the variance by n minus 1, which in this case is how big? n is 10, so it better be 9, right? Well, here's the deal. I'd better round this. <coughs> Excuse me. I make this a number, it better be to two decimal places, right? Okay, so there's that. Now, when I do the new and improved shortcut way, let's go over here back to this for a second. So I've got n times the sum of the x squared minus the sum of the x's squared over n times n minus 1. So let's do the shortcut way. So I better take the sum of the x's squared, right? So I'm going to do the sum of x's squared. This is the sum of these guys squared. All right, now I'm going to do now I'm going to do, so I did the sum of the x's squared. Now I'm going to do the sum of the x squared. So this looks like, I've come over here and I've already squared those values. This looks like the sum of those values. Okay. So now I'm going to compute the variance by checking through these. This looks like, in my numerator, I've got n, and that, in my case that's 10 times the sum of the x squareds, so that's this one, minus the sum of the x's squared, which is this. That's my numerator, so I wrap it in parentheses. And now I'm going to do the denominator, again in parentheses. So I've got n times n minus 1, which is 10 times 9. I get this number. Okay, so I get this value rounded out. Now, because I'm doing this with the shortcut formula, let me zoom in a little bit more. Sorry about that. Because I'm doing this with the shortcut formula, I don't have to truncate off to just the bare number of decimal places. Does that make sense? I don't have to. When I do the original one, the old one, where we compute the mean first, I've got to truncate. I've got to round. On the new one, I do not have to. I can, but I don't have to. So what I've done here is the old way, I have to round to this amount. But the new way, I've gotten to extend out a little bit more. I've got better accuracy on my results, right? Now, let's do it the MS Excel way. What's the answer look like? They're the same, right? Let's just go back for a second. I want to look at this one and even see if that was the same. So if I go back and I look at my information, it looks like if I were to have extended it out, I would have gotten the same number, right? So let's just extend it out and see for a second. But let's go back and change some of our numbers. What if my data had been, you know, kind of crazily out of place? Do my numbers still stay the same? Uh, let's get a look at the Excel one. Do my numbers still say the same? Well, let's make them at least round the same, John. There we go. Okay, that one looked pretty decent. Still holding on to it. Okay. 
well, this is not back. This is not working well. <laughs> Still not working out for me here, is it? Well, wow, that's a killer. We've got to, we've got to get into where they'll where they'll mess up for us. Two eight three five eight. Well, Dad, gum it. Uh, <laughs> nope, that's killing me here. Um, thanks, I appreciate the confidence. Um, well, what you will see is if you if you do these enough, uh, that's what happens when you try to do an example on the fly. Right? Um, what happens is you will actually see a difference if you use the shortcut formula versus the one where you round the means. Okay, in the arithmetic. Um, but the truth is that um, the arithmetic is rounding out neatly. But remember, we have we have picked we have actually picked our our significant digits. So this is the best we can actually approximate it to. And that is the true value. The arithmetic actually will fail too if you. It's not just a significant digits argument. What I'm trying to get out here. There is a significant digits argument. But um, if you do this enough, the arithmetic will actually fail. Does that make sense? The answers will start to diverge. Okay. Man, that's always really sucky when that happens. Okay. Um, let's do one last one here. Remember how we did the mean of a how we did the mean of a frequency distribution? All right. Well. We also have to do the standard deviation of a frequency distribution. Sometimes you get su uh, summarized data, and you have got to do your best to approximate a variance in a standard deviation. Well, folks, there is the same format that happens as before. So what happens each and every time we do this? I have got whatever my frequency is times my xm squared. Right? I'm looking at a midpoint on one of my on one of my classes. Um, the, the sum of the frequency times the midpoint of my class is squared divided by n or n minus one. So what I have is this continual same process of exactly what we've been doing before. Um, and the easiest way to do this is to make a table that has five columns each, one for each column. Yes, sir. Um, not yet. I'll go back in just a second, okay? I promise. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just trying to help set it up first. And then we'll go back. Okay? I promise. So there's this five-column table idea that's going to make it easiest to build. To build. So um, what we'll do is we'll look at the class, the frequency in the midpoint, the frequency times the midpoint, and the frequency times the midpoint squared. We're going to do some summation along the way, and uh, this is going to be mighty, mighty useful. So, um, go ahead and turn to your books uh, on page 130, and we're going to work through this one. Um, 130, prob uh, example 24, that's a really great example. We're just going to talk through it because it's all in the book. Um, So, take a second, write this down, and watch, along, watch as we kind of build this table and see all the pieces fall into place. How many of you have a book with you today? Woo. Overwhelming. All right, let me copy this to the, uh, the presenter. Um, let's just, is it okay if we actually just work through this one? That would be really, really helpful to me um, had I been a student. Here we go. 
Now remember what I told you in the previous page. Um, I'm going to let's kind of compile all this information onto one so it's easiest. So I've got the formula and I've got this data on the page. Now I've already got three of my columns in place, right? The class, is, the, class the frequency, we've even figured out the midpoint, okay? Um, because this is an example that we've worked through a couple of times already in class. So let's come through here. Let's create a few more columns. Um, what did I say the, uh, let's just go back and look. So I'm saying that the smart move is to make a class, a frequency, and midpoint, and then a frequency times midpoint and a frequency times midpoint squared <coughs> columns. Okay, frequency times midpoint. And this is frequency times midpoint squared. All right. Well, I think we can go through the frequency times the midpoint stuff pretty easily, right? Frequency times midpoint, that's what this is. All right, one times eight is eight. Two times 13. Three times 18. What is it? 54. What's 5 times 23? 115. What's 4 times 28? What? Okay. I agree. What's 3 times 33? 99. And 2 times 38 is? 76. Okay. So now I'm going to take the frequency times the midpoint squared. So I've got to do 1 times 64, 2 times 169, 3 times whatever 18 squared is. Anybody know that one? I feel like it's 324. Is that right? Thank you, Sinead. Okay, what's uh, what's 23 squared? Speak up, please. 529. Okay, what's 28 squared? Uh, 724? 784. Three uh, what's 33 squared? I'm really having trouble hearing over the fan, I'm sorry. 1,089. And then 2 times 38 squared. Or what's 38 squared, rather? 1444. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go through and I'm actually just going to compute the product, which is 64, um, 338. 900, 960, 972. Um, 5 times 5, 29. 2500, 2600, 2645, I believe. If I'm getting any of these numbers incorrect, let me know. Okay? Then 4 times 784 is 2800. Um, 2800, 31, 20, 31. Is 4 times 784, 31, 36? Great. 3 times 1,089 is going to be 3,000, 3,240, 3,276. 67. 67. Oh, it's a 9 into this. Wow. Oh. Thanks. Okay, and then twice 1444, which is 28. 
88. Well, why am I telling you to build this table? Because in a second, I'm going to tell you to take totals. So now what I'm going to do is add all these up. Can anybody tell me what the sum of this column is? 490. Okay, what's the sum of this column? Huh? 13,310. Thank you. All right, so look at my formula here. What have I done? I've got f times the xm squared. That's what this column is, right? So by going through and taking their sum, I have this value here down the bottom. I've got the sum of the f times the xms. I get this number, but I have yet to square it. Okay, we're going to get there in a little bit. And I can tell you what n is, and I got a little hasty with my total. My total should have been over here. n is the number of my frequencies. Well, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2. So that's 1, 3, 6, 11, 15, 18, uh, 20. So what my variance looks like of this frequency distribution is 20 times at the sum of the f times the xm squares, which is this number, which is 13, 3, 10, minus the sum of the fxms, that's this, it's this number squared, divided by n times n minus 1. Well, that's 20 times 19. Well, that's reachable, right? I can figure this one out. Um, So I've got this number here, which was supposed to have gotten copied, but apparently did not. There we go. Oh. Did anyone know you could do that? Apparently now I can. I'm a child. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I have no idea. There we go. All right. So uh, if we did 13, 13, 13, 3, 10 times 20, that should be 26, 6, 20. Only 2, 6, 6, 2, 0, 0. Minus whatever 490 is squared, um, and then time, divided by 380. What is 490 squared? 240,100. 240,100, <coughs> just like that? Okay, so what I get out of this is 26,100 divided by 380, which looks like what number? 68. 68. 68 for what? 68 um, And stuff, right? Because I don't have to stop with my variance on this one. Because it's an unbiased estimator of the variance. So basically, um, if you remember when we did the midpoint, uh, when we did the mean of a frequency distribution, it's the same type of work, right? In fact, it's really pretty easy to do all of this work on one table. Do we have any questions on this? I know it's a blast. It's so much fun. You're staying away. Barely. Okay.
do you have any other questions on this one for the time being? All right, then why don't you let me turn you loose on one? Um, why don't you go to number um, 22? On page 139. There we go. That looks really fuzzy. There we go. Uh, why don't you do number 22 in your groups? In just a moment. Oh, crap. Well, if we have time, we'll get into some probability today. So, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. group work, this is really, really quiet. I would recommend like actually just writing on one sheet of paper. Thank you. 